Welcome back to another Python and Pygame programming tutorial, everybody. Uh, I hope you've been enjoying the series so far. In the last tutorial, we were looking at uh, key events and uh, event handling in, in our code. Uh, I actually did not include in, an example that I believe I should have. I wanted to test if the event.type is uh, equal to pygame.mouse button down. And if it is, <laughs> then we should, we should play the gong sound. <laughs> Right, let's check it out. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I'll, I'll get a little closer so you can. Oh. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's a beautiful sound. I sure as hell hope you can hear that because if you don't, I'm just laughing like a maniac. Anyway, let's continue with the tutorial. Um, I want to show you guys something cool with the mouse motion event, and uh, let's set that up over here. Let's say pygame.mousemotion. You suddenly can use a whole new uh, uh, module, or at least sub module, in pygame, and that is mouse, pygame.mouse, and we can do lots of different things with that. In fact, we can even get the mouse position, which is usually a pretty valuable thing to have. That function is called getpos, and if we look at it in the documentation, there's so many other things you can do with the mouse object. Pagi module that allows you to work with the mouse. You can get whether it's press, you can get the position, you can get the amount of mouse movement, you can set the mouse cursor position, you can even, yeah, you can determine where the mouse is going to be on the screen, which is very cool. Um, you can determine whether or not the mouse is visible, um, whether or not the window is actually getting the mouse positions and mouse clicks from get focused. Change the cursor, get the cursor, nifty different things. Mouse.getPosition is what we're going to be looking at right now, though. Let's say, what if we could move one of our blocks around with the mouse? And let's let's look at that. If I go back up to my block object here, that that's that's still code folded, but I'm going to expand that open a little bit more. What if we set the position? to that uh, mouse position. We still got our set position function, so we should be able to get right back down here and say that, okay, let's say our A block can go straight to that mouse position. Keep in mind the mouse position get position returns things as a tuple, so it'll return the X and Y position. Oh jeez, what has happened? All right, I, I clicked on the uh, get example. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> All right, it returns the x and y position of the mouse position of the mouse cursor. Sorry, together. So we need to split that up with some um, slicing and indexing. We can use mouse position zero, and uh, I'm just going to change this to mouse pause. So that's a little bit easier to just type in mouse pause one. Now when we run this, when we when we look at our code, we've got. Uh, Nothing happening. Why is, why is it doing that? Why, why isn't it working? Do you guys... Do you guys have any idea? Let me tell you something, guys. Let me tell you something pretty crazy and pretty big. We forgot <laughs> to put this block group draw function part of the loop. It's only been drawing it once and then leaving it later. If we want to change the, the position and, and have the sprites and objects on the screen actually move, of course we have to put them in the loop, in the event loop. I'm going to put that um, after the clock tick and before the event update. Now if we run this, let's check out what happens here. This should be pretty, this should be pretty humorous for you guys. <laughs> you see what's happening? It's going to draw the sprite over and over and over again in each, in each new position. And uh, it's, it's still drawing the red one over here too. <laughs> and I'm making a mess. Like, it's, it's making a big jumbled mess of, of bricks. Why is that happening? Well, keep in mind that we're kind of at least keeping track of only that of the, of the, of the block, and then it's going to keep that window that it previously had for the next frame. And it's going to keep that window that it just had for the next frame, and over and over and over again, because it's not being reset. Well, okay, how do we reset the screen? That's how we reset the screen. Remember we had that window.fill white 
that would uh, erase the entire screen contents and fill it with a solid color. Well, unfortunately, that's what we're going to have to use again. And it will display only that. It'll refresh over and over again with whites. It's, it's like redrawing the background and then all the sprites, and then redrawing the background and then all the sprites. It's a little inefficient. In fact, it's, it's kind of very inefficient for when you could be doing like other more advanced things. But for now, this is okay. We have to redraw the background screen to keep the effect of the, the box moving moving around. So if I show this up here, now it's okay, because white uh, window.fillwhite is okay. But the block that's above this block has been added to this point where it's, it's always displaying above it, even though we can keep moving around it. If we put this in at the bottom, if we actually add the um, another block after, or at least before, we might have different functionality. Although, keep in mind, it's a drawing is, is arbitrary, so I wonder, I just wonder if we'll have different functionality. And uh, we do, in this case, so... Fascinating. <laughs> good things to keep in mind, and, and, and good things to think about. Now let's continue, though, because you saw, at least in the, in the example and the what we were looking at just previously, for some strange reason, the box is kind of jumping to this top left corner of the mouse, and the top left corner of the box is, is associating itself there. Well, that's, I suppose, exactly what we told it to do. But it might be a little bit easier if the mouse was in the center of the box. And this effect can be reached, of course. This can be done. And we can do that by setting up an origin. And that's what I've been trying to, or at least I've been, I've been slowly introducing the idea to you throughout the past couple of videos, telling you that I, I'm going to introduce this soon. And all that very is, is kind of like a property that the, the sprite will have. We can set it up in the in the beginning of a of our objects creation in the constructor. We can say self dot origin x can equal self dot rect dot center x. Remember, if you look at the documentation, we had uh, the rect that was over at the uh, inside the Pygame module, and there's an option or at least a property that has center, and center x and center y. So we can keep track of those, we can really manipulate those to have a certain origin that we can keep track of those with. The problem is, what happens if we use this object as um, the rect up here, when we're by default simply creating the box that's 64 by 64, if we're just using the simple colored square that we've been using before, well then it'll create this center uh, origin, but then what if we change the size of the image or the, and the sprite when we actually load an image and we change the rect? Well, then we have to do this exact same thing again, don't we? Right? Because we have to keep resetting the values once the rect has been changed. Do you see the problem here? We've got a bit of, uh, of duplicated code, so let's turn that into a function. Let's create a new function called uh, set properties. And what this will do is it will get the new rect from whatever the image currently is, and then it'll determine the new origin. Okay. So now, once we've got, um, the rect doesn't have to be up here, then we can go ahead and run our set properties function. And we can do the same thing when we set a new image from the file name. Wonderful. Now, we've also still got the problem of the actual position of it. Because even though we set the origin value, if we were to run this code, we still have it at the very top left. We can work through this by changing the way that the set position function actually works. What if we were to say that self.rect.x is the new value from what we're actually looking at minus the origin? Well then, whatever the origin may be, it might be into the function like that. So now if I view this and I run this code, obviously the mouse is centered at the center of the sprite. And this could be remain constant for whatever the sprite may be. Super duper cool. Alright. What if we change this, what if we even change the origin? What if we said the origin is, um, oh, I don't know. Um, actually, let's keep that there and let's just comment it out. Let's say 3... Let's say 30. Whatever we set the origin to be, it'll be like distance on the 
on the sprite that we're that we're changing. Oh, sweet! So now we've got 30, and we got three in on the x value, and that's where it's going to kind of like map to in the sprite. That works. That works. So now we've got some mouse movement with the object that we've created. We've got it centered at the origin because we've created a new origin. Now we've we've change the properties of, of the sprite and object itself so it'll reevaluate the rect every time we change the image because we set up a new function to do that and we are not repeatedly displaying on the screen because we've changed it to be the window fill white every time we update man we covered a lot of ground in this video that was awesome guys all right Thanks for watching. <laughs> uh, I think I'm done. There's not too much left to cover in, in this video, and I'm, I'm pleased that we finally got through it. I know there are a few bugs and glitches in the recording. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I better not still be paused. All right, good. I'm still recording. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you like the series, please like the video. If you like me, subscribe. Thanks. See you in the next tutorial.